Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Selma, North Carolina. It is a double game two of two as a CC, CC Cougars coming up from Sanford, North Carolina and matching up with JCC Jaguars. PD North's Craig Green bringing you coverage on John, JCC Jaguars Sports Network. Welcome inside courtside here, PD North's Craig Green. As the Lady Jaguars fell 82-66, the Jaguar boys looking to pick up the win against a 7 and 10, 5 and 8 in conference play. Cougars coached by Coach McDougal. And this is a rematch, PD, from a uh, earlier contest in uh, November as uh, the uh, Jags were able to go down there on November 29th uh, right after Thanksgiving and uh, give thanks as they get a W 78-77 in Sanford. So can the Jags complete the season sweep today here at home? Be interesting to see now the Jaguars have some extra numbers with them. Remember, uh, Devin Emerson will be playing as well. He was ineligible earlier in the uh, in the uh, campaign, but now he's back. And uh, Coach Creasy is going to have some uh, more troops to deploy today. So let's see how it goes. With 426 left, Craig, uh, we got the best seat in the house in, uh, in Johnson County, but the gym is starting to really get packed here as uh, the final game of the doubleheader is – the Cougars and the Jaguars look to square off in about four and a half minutes, Craig. Jaguars need to start the season off home here with the victory and try to climb their three and six at conference play. They definitely, this win right here would mean a lot for Coach Creasy and the boys. They have to have it. You know, you want to be relevant in Region 10. You want to be near the top of the charts. You got to win the games that they say you are, quote, supposed to win. This is a winnable game here at home. For the Jaguars facing a team that's seven and ten, just like you said, five and eight in the conference. You know, also they're on a uh, on the downside of a losing streak. I mean, they're one and four in their last five games. It's not a good place to be if you're the Cougars. And for the Cougars, they're, I'm sure they're thinking about this game as a as a chance to get back. They're going to be motivated. You know, they thought they had this game against uh, JCC the last time, a one point contest, and. You know, here they are now on the road trying to get it back. Can they do it today? We'll see. You know, there's a lot of unknown with the Jaguars, with the new players on their side. Coach Creasy knows them better than anyone else. So the element of the unknown is going to play a factor as well this afternoon. All right, three minutes to go. We're going to step away and get a quick word from our sponsor. We'll be right back here inside Jaguar Sports Network. Selma, North Carolina, PD Norris, Craig Green here bringing you coverage of today's matchup as a, on Jaguar Sports Network as the Central Carolina Cougars matching up with the Johnson Community College Jaguars. PD Norris here, Craig Green as the Cougars coming to the sideline, get ready for the starting lineups. 
Craig, final thoughts for a Jaguars win today. Jags, I think, are going to have to do their best to protect that basketball. Um, they have the element of the unknown, I guess, like I said, because Devin Everson is a, a guy who's only played three games. You know, we'll see what they can do with guys like uh, Raekwon Johnson as well as uh, Thomas Sams. Will they come in and uh, pre, uh, create an element of surprise for the Cougars that they're not aware of? But I think also just have to uh, take advantage of their opportunities. You get a good shot at the basket, take it, make it. Protect the basketball, rebound, and by all means, no silly fouls. All right, as we can see, the CCCC Cougars lining up on the baseline for the National Anthem. We'll send it to our PA announcer for the National Anthem of today's game. Welcome out to men's first annual 2024 Welcome back courtside here is the Jaguars and the Cougars. Who wins the battle, the Jaguars or the Cougars? We'll find out in 40 minutes. But right now, P.D. Doors, Craig Green's got the best seat in the house here as the sun is slowly setting towards the stands. And they're going to have trouble seeing. But we'll have it right here on JCC Jaguar Sports Network. Starting lineups for both teams. For the, uh, Jag for the uh, Cougars, led by uh, Coach Brad McDougal, they're starting Pat Malott, number two, number three, Jesse Mitchell, number four, Thomas Stafford, number 13, DeAndre Leach, number 22, Dontavious Petaway. Ball goes up and it's basketball time in Selma. Jaguars get the first tip. You can see Purdy hands it off 
to Dunn, and Dunn, the right side. Great ball movement by the Jaguars to start it off. Dunn, great defense. Purdy, looking with 11 on the shot clock, up and under layups off the rim, and fighting for it. Coming out with it, no one, and they call a jump ball, and it be Cougars ball. Already scrapping on the floor for the loose ball. You can see what kind of game this is going to be. Shot clock should be. Shot clock to 25, and Cougars with the ball in the backcourt. Is Elijah Purdy guarded tightly on my lot. Great ball movement so far by both teams, Craig. Just inside of a minute. Leach trying to get the first team on the board, and Michael Linton pulls down the rebound and pushes it ahead, and Dunn loses the ball dribbling a lot. Jaguars playing man-to-man -man defense right now. Jesse Mitchell back to Malott. Malott for three. Off the iron and coming down with the rebound and pulling it down was Elijah Purdy. Purdy. Look at the head goes right side to Linton and Linton. Baseline jumper's good. Linton draws first blood for the Jags. Gets this thing started here in the first quarter, first half. McLean gets a long rebound ahead to Linton and Linton with the air one. A good take to the basket after the rebound by McLean. And now Linton with a chance to go to the line to add to his point total. And Linton, his athleticism, let's see if that can cause a real issue for the Cougars. Remember, PD, this is a, uh, a one-point game in Sanford. Helping him bring the ball up the court. Stafford inside and going up strong was Jesse Mitchell. And a good find by Stafford. See his teammate cutting to the basket. It's Stafford with a steal and a cross court pass. Nice take by Stafford. High off the glass and Linton with a pulling up his rebound. Purdy taking it straight to the cup. Jaguars 62. Pretty unafraid to go to the bucket. Nice scoop up and under, adjusted in midair, was able to get it to go. Jaguars trying to set the tempo as Malat. Left side to Leach. Malat. Looks pass inside to Petaway and over to Leach. Leach with a Corner three and fight for it. Coming out with a rebound is Elijah Purdy. Pushing ahead to McLean. Dunn, nice move. McLean, a top to Purdy. Purdy right side to McLean and Jaguars move the ball. It's going to stay with the Jags. 15 on the shot clock. Looks like a rolled off the leg of a Cougar. Now, Kentrell Brooks is going to enter the game. Give, give DeAndre Leach a break. Six to two. 16.57 left. Jaguars lead six to two. Done. It's fouled and picking up the foul is Patrick Malott. A little too physical was Malat on that exchange. And now Jaden Dunn will go to the line for two as they said this was in the act of shooting. Dunn misses the first opportunity of the charity stripe.
Defensively, if you're the Jags, got to make sure you close out. Don't let anybody get wide open looks from three. Jaguars 0 for 3 for the charity strike. Locke kicks it. Put the ball around the perimeter is Stafford's for three, and Linton pulls down his fourth rebound. Cracks your third rebound. Done. Hands it off to Purdy. Purdy, nice crossover. Inside, spin the ball. Gregory for the corner. Linton trying to contest with Petaway with the rebound, and Petaway comes out with the rebound to head to my lock. Petaway taking Linton to the hole and hits the floor hard as Jaguars in transition, could not convert. Great defense by Jesse Mitchell. Nice spin, shot and nice take by Brooks. Kentrell Brooks finds himself getting on the board. And good finish by Brooks at the basket. Gregory back out to Purdy. Purdy to Dunn, inside to Linton for the mismatch with Petaway. Kicks it to the corner to McLean. Gregory, nine on the shot clock. Linton, baseline jumper too hard. Pulling down a rebound as Jesse Mitchell averages 18 points per game for Central Carolina. Stafford, back out to Malott. 15-23 left, first half. Doubleheader here as the Jaguars fell 82-66 in the first game. Lady Jaguars fell to the Flying Eagles for Southwest Virginia Community College. Malotz, three, off the heel of the iron. Jaden Dunn pulling down the big rebound over Petaway. Also the 15 minute mark here. Linton looking for separation. Jaden Dunn steps back three and it's good. Yeah, Dunn was able to convert that time. Missed two from the free throw line and was able to cash in from three this time. Purdy. Ahead, Gregory. Three and it's good. Two Jaguars, straight. Two straight. Two straight for the Jags. Good look. Was able to convert. And now, and now the Jags, PD. Sorry, the Jags are uh, increasing that lead now. Fast start for JCC. Trying to answer back. Jesse Mitchell gets the perimeter shooting for the Cougars on. If he's going to make three pointers, you got to make sure you got a hand in his face. Don't make it easy for him. Fightman's on the floor. And Jesse Mitchell with a foul. Checking in at first dead ball. Nathan Willis for the Cougars. And Jaguars. Howard along with Anderson checks in. And here, Coach McDougal trying to work the referee, talking about illegal screens by the Jaguars. Purdy takes it to the hole. Kicks it to the corner. Three on the way. Gregory does not fall. Jesse for three. Jesse Mitchell tries his second straightaway three and could not come out with it. Done. Out to the hole. Picks up his dribble. Trapped off, triple team, back out to Purdy with 20 on the shot clock. Nice work to fight out of a pack of Cougars there. Howard. Great defense by the Cougars. It's a turnover. And Q Anderson compounds the issue by fouling him, and now there's a timeout on the floor. 12 to 7, Jaguars Sports Network. Jaguars lead the Cougars.
Selma North High, 12 to seven. Jaguars lead the Cougars. First media timeout, 13-12 left. Cougars with the ball. Coming out facing a full court man-to-man -man press. And Purdy, Elijah Purdy picks up the first, his first foul on the hand check. A little too aggressive trying to get the steal. Got to admire Coach Creasy, though, making things tough on the Cougars, not letting them just walk it up the court. As we mentioned back right after Thanksgiving, the Jaguars ruined the start for the Cougars down in Sanford with a one-point win, 78-77. Mitchell's pull-up was rattles out. Brooks with a steal, Brooks, and it's good. Tough basket by Brooks to fight through the contact in the traffic and finish. Five points for Brooks. Ready to Dunn. Dunn, right side, double team. Purdy with the screen. Trying to come around the screen is Malat. Great defense. Gregory for three. And Mitchell with the rebound. Malat looking for separation. Driving. Kicks it to the corner. Three on the way. Twelve minutes to go. And Howard stabs it out in the backcourt. No backcourt violation. Ball was deflected. Petaway. His left side to Malat. Mitchell with three on the shot clock, 15 footer. Could have quieted the crowd definitely with a made shot. Tight ball game so far in the first eight and a half minutes, PD. Nobody's really been able to push their initiative on the other team. Off the mark for Jaden Dunn, too hard from the corner, short of side of the court, it's coast to coast as Petaway. Yeah, Petaway using his speed, got to the bucket, was able to get two points back for Central Carolina, now a turnover by the Jags. 7-0 run by Central Carolina. Jaguars looking to stop the bleeding. Dunn inside. Great defense by Petaway. 10-50. Malat picks up the ball from Petaway. Jaguars fall back in a loose man-to-man -man defense. They can easily switch that man to man to a matchup zone if they so choose. Willis straight to the hold. Bodies flying and it's on the floor. And on the foul was Howard. Singletary Linton checks in along with Amar Boone. Boone and Lassiter checks in. Ten twenty-five left, first half. Twelve to eleven. Central Carolina looking to get their first lead. Mitchell out to Willis. Willis for three. Nice rebound by Lassiter and turns it over off the hands of Jesse Mitchell out of bounds. Only the second turnover for Central Carolina in the first half. First. Nine minutes and 50 seconds of play. They've done a good job protecting the basketball. Still trail by a point. Thanks to the hot start by the Jags. And the Jags cool down as Howard looking to get in the scoring column. Look how, look how far out the uh, Jags are being defended. Lenton headed back to the free throw line. He's 0 for 1. And Linton pretty fortunate 
to be going to the line because he was using his elbow to clear space. You really have to be careful doing that because referee sees you extended too far. You will be called for an offensive foul. Linton shaking his head. You know he wants that free throw back. Checking in the game is Lavinwood. This is both free throws. Lavinwood will check in the next dead ball for the Cougars. Lassiter moving the ball around the perimeter to Mitchell. Mitchell take to the hole and. I was just saying it was slapped away from behind. I didn't see the slap, but nevertheless, it'll be JCC's ball. Nine twenty-six left, first half. Yeah, Emerson hitting the floor hard. Actually, it was McLean. Check that. 20, not 10. Keon Lassiter. Straight to the hole, kicks it to the corner. Three on the way, and it's nothing but nylon for Boone. Yeah, First battle. Lead for Central Carolina. And Kristen Battle wide open out there on the wing all by himself. Jaguars stop the bleeding. We're all tied at 14. 840 left. Great defense by the Jaguars. Fall to the floor. Gets away with the travels. Lavinwood spins it back out. Willis. Nice look. And here come the Jaguars. Going up strong. Is Emmanuel McLean, Jaguars. Strong take to the basket. Nicely done. Jack still holding that two point lead. And they're playing aggressively on defense. Look how they're closing out on any ball handler that, that uh, Central Carolina puts out there. That time they left the shooter wide open, PD, and they could not close out on Keon Lasseter. 17 to 16. Anderson pushes out with Singletary. Singletary, long three. Not enough. It's Lavinwood. 724 left. Lasseter driving, kicks it to the corner. Three, wide open, not even contested in the perimeter with Stafford. Four misses, four gets the rebound. Lenta gets his own rebound. Triple team. He'll head to the free throw line, 0 for 3. This will be a big one for Linton. Kind of get off that, uh, that missed streak. Going to need him to convert from the line in, the, in a, such a tight game like this, Petey. 17-16. And Linton right now sitting 0 for 3 from the, from the charity stripe. Makes the first. Gets off the bunny. It's high energy in the first 13 minutes of this game. Two ties through 13 minutes, Craig. I mean, we've seen aggressive full-court defense. We've seen, you know, really in-your-face style defensively on both sides. Jaguars jump out to a 9-4 to lead, and Central Carolina Cougars fight back. Pick up their first lead, 14-12. to Now we're at 17, and Linton, the hot streak, making two. He's two for five. Jaguars doing a good job. On the boards right now, 18 rebounds. It's 12 for the Cougars. Cougars 
push it ahead to Malak. Malak inside the Lavinwood. Lavinwood traveling away and no calls. Here comes Dunn up and under and misses. Great footwork by Jaden Dunn. Yeah, he just couldn't finish at the rim, but a blessing in disguise for the Jaguars as there's a turnover. Now we got a timeout. 6.44 left, 18 to 17, Jaguars. Craig Green here bringing you coverage of the Jaguars and the Cougars as we're one point separating the Cougars and the Jaguars in a tight game here in the first half. 6.44 left, first half, 18 to 17. The Jaguars way on Jaguars Sports Network as the sun is setting in Johnson County in the face of the fans. Need us some sunglasses out there if you want to get the correct vision as all the fans have. Her hands up over their face is Purdy. And a high screen by Gregory Purdy. Nice back behind a back pass. Dunn slips on his feet. Go to Purdy. Purdy up and under. Passes it off. And Q Anderson puts the Jaguars up by three. 20 to 17. And a nice pass by Preddy to find him. Running baseline to the basket. The Cougars didn't see him, but Preddy did. A lot over the boom. Twenty to seventeen. It's turnover number five for the for Central Carolina. Five as well for the Jags. This pretty brings the ball up slowly over right side to Dunn. Cross court pass and almost stolen by Leach. Five fifty left. Dunn. Bounce passes over to Purdy. As cutting was five on the shot clock. Singletary from the right wing. Coming down with the rebound. A one-handed rebound is Kendrell Brooks. Brooks looking inside to Jackson Levenwood. 5.27 left. Nice backdoor cut and out of bounds. And Michael Linton checks in for Singletary. Twenty to seventeen, Jaguars lead. First half, five twenty-three left. The sun will no longer be a factor, PD. We saw it earlier in the women's game, and the sun's finally set. Might get some cleaner looks at the basket on each side of the floor. Nice handoff to Purdy from Hugh Anderson. Anderson baseline. He is held by Amar Brooks. I mean, boom. Yeah, 23 with the foul. That'll be five on the team. And although not in the bonus yet, Hugh Anderson going to the line for two because he was in the act of shooting. 5.04 left is the star of the Cougars. Jesse Mitchell will check in the next dead ball. And Anderson makes the first. 21-17. Jesse Mitchell averages 18 points per game for the Cougars. Yeah. 
Q. Anderson misses. As Lavinwood picks up the rebound. Off the missed free throw. Five minutes to go in the first half. Four points separate the Cougars and the Jaguars. Nice ball movement is Brooks. Zone defense now for the Jaguars. Jaguars closing out on the defense. And we got a block and foul. It's Q Anderson with the block and foul. And bailed out the Cougars with five on the shot clock. Jags did a good job defensively, but just could not finish out that final five seconds and avoid drawing a foul. And now an illegal screen called as Lavengood, the guilty party. This is Turnover number seven and foul number one on Lavengood. Penaway checks in for Lavengood. Jaguars looking to extend the lead. They lead 21 to 17. 17 fouls. For the Cougars, four for the Jaguars. It's been a hard fought game. Nobody's really pulled away from the other side, and the offense hasn't really been there either. Petaway with a long rebound off the Dunn miss. Dunn had a great shot. Just unlucky, rolled in and out. As Howard will check in the next dead ball for the Jaguars. Well, Sun's playing a factor still. Thought it wouldn't, but you can see it right now clearly in the face of Jesse Mitchell. 21-17. As Petaway gets inbound. Mid-range jumper too hard off the mark, and here come the Jaguars. Michael Linton. We got to travel. Michael Linton falling out of bounds. Yeah, couldn't keep his balance, unfortunately, and turns into a turnover for the Jags. Four points separate the Cougars and the Jaguars. We're standing at 21-17 the last two and a half minutes, and Jesse Mitchell quiets. He cleans up the mess from Kentrell Brooks. Like forces up a shot and head back to the free throw line. A good job by the Jaguars to break the press and find Linton, and then force the foul on force the foul on the lot. So now we're up to eight fouls, and Linton will go to the line for one and one. So Litton, after missing three straight free throws, PD, he's made three in a row now, going for four. Low scoring first half we've had. Announcers jinx and he bricked it. He bricks this. He's four, four, four for eight from the charity strike. 50%, but at that point, you want to be 100% when you're not guarded. Jaguars can be a, have a big lead. Nice defense by Howard and a block by Mitchell. Got right in his face, blocked his complete vision, hand all over the basketball, great defense. Purdy, left of the paint, stops. There's a Michael Linton on the baseline. Shooters rolled, no, and coming down with a rebound is DeAndre Leach. Nice pass inside to Jesse Mitchell. Contested at the goal was Howard. And it's 22-21. And Mitchell wins that matchup this time against Howard. Both guys evenly matched in terms of size, but Mitchell wins this battle. Had a body on Howard. 
Petaway with a block on Emmanuel McLean shot. It all started on the defensive end with the, the block by Petaway. On the shot by McLean. Now the Cougars coming down with a chance to take the lead quietly. It's been a tight game, kind of nervous back and forth. I mean, again, no one's really had a chance to, to really impose their will on the other side and go on a big, long run. Brooks ties it up for the second time. Correction, third time. First tie was at 14, second tie at 17, and now he's staying at 22. I'm here the cheerleaders for the Jaguars. The, land, the, the lead ball. stays at 22. Maybe McLean's pass is just about intercepted as he's trying to find Purdy. McLean inside to Howard. Howard trying to step left and had to push the ball off his wrist. Two minutes, two minutes. Kind of like the idea by Howard there to uh, kind of ball fake go up and under, but he couldn't get it to go. Leach. 24-22 Central Carolina. Purdy with 10 on the shot clock, goes up. Circus shot and could not connect. Jaguars, cold the last four minutes is done with the steal. One on, three on one and lent into the line. And Malat with the contact. Malat's gonna have to take a seat here pretty soon. That's three on him. That's one of their starting players. It could be a big, a a big angle for the second half. PD is foul trouble for the Cougars again. Like I said, had Malat with three, as he will take a seat. Michael Linton trying to get the Jaguars to tie the game up with 117 left in the first half. Jaguars, fourth tie. Four ties in the first half and Central Carolina coming up empty on that possession with 107 left, first half. Wide open in the quarter. Jaden Dunn. You're wide open. Not too hard. Just set your feet and go up. And what great defense by Linton. Blocks the shot of Petaway. Knocks it right back into his own lap and he falls out of bounds with the basketball in his breadbasket. 27-24. Secretary shaking a bacon. Going up one on the four. And the ball stays right with the Jaguars. I'm not sure how that could not be a foul. Lavinwood checks in. He'll come in for Brooks, and Brooks will have a seat to end the first half. Top done. Done. Right side. Three on the way by McLean, and it's good. Jaguars, two straight threes, 30 to 24. Emmanuel McLean waiting on the wing, literally, PD. Got his shot, took his shot, and made it. And then oh that one God. pinned. Singletary. That's the end of the first half, 30 to 24. 
Jaguars and Krugers with the Jaguars with the lead.
Welcome back, halftime here in Selma. 30 to 24, Jaguars lead the Cougars. Wanna go ahead and go with the stats for the first half. As a Jaguar shooting 40%, 41% from three. The Cougars lead away with 24 rebounds. Jaguars, 21 rebounds. Cougars with nine turnovers. Jaguars with six. Biggest lead for the Cougars, two, 24 to 22. Biggest lead for the Jaguars, 12 to four, which was eight points. The Cougars shooting 31% from the field and 33% from the three. As we're two minutes and 37 seconds away for starting here in the second half, the Cougars look to improve to eight and 10 on the season, six and eight in conference play as the Jaguars look to even off in the last six with the three and three record, move on to five and seven overall and four and six in conference play. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today as the Jaguars and the Cougars match off from Selma. Listen to us on High Level Media or on the JCC Jaguar Sports Network on JCC Jaguars Athletics YouTube page. I want to thank you, Petey Doris, Craig Green here. With a minute 55, Craig, anything that the Jaguars need to adjust in the second half to continue the hot streak? Yeah, got to uh, continue to uh, – they got to do a better job on the boards, really. Uh, 24 to 20 on the boards right now, not good enough for Coach Creasy's team. Got to do a better job rebounding, keeping the uh, Cougars away from offensive rebounds and second chances. And then offensively, you got to come down and knock down your shots. I mean, 10 of 25 in the first half unofficially. Not going to get it done today if you want to have a season sweep of the Cougars. Yeah, with 117 left, 30 to 24, Jaguars lead by six. Can the Jaguars continue the hot streak here in the second half? We'll have it with you in just a moment. to 24. Jaguars in the backcourt facing a tight defense as the Cougars come out. Three on the way by Gregory and fighting forward and coming out with his pet away. The sun is set here in Johnson County as the Jaguars fans really appreciate that. Second half, Michael Linton. Missed shot and with the rebound is Purdy. Purdy cleaning it up. Good job down low. Again, we talk about second chances, keeping the Cougars away from the offensive boards and creating second chances of your own. And good job by the Jacks to do that on that possession as Linton got a little too much of the arm of Dontavious Petaway. Michael Linton, great contestant at the back basket for Petaway. Petaway looking to get the Cougars on the board in the second half, makes the first. Yeah, 
Petaway had a slow start to the first half. They, he's only up to uh, three points now after that made free throw. Again, offense was not the theme of the day in the first half. I mean, a very low score game, 30 to 24. Got some issues with the uh, shot clock feed. They're trying to get everything adjusted. Trying to get a shot clock. And Johnson will come into play on the scores table for the Cougars. 32 25. Now we are down to 15 on the shot clock as intended. <clears throat> it was a missed free throw, rebounded by Johnson, which reset a shot clock. And three by Brooks, and just nothing but nylon. Smooth stroke by Kentrell Brooks to convert. And bring the Cougars a little closer as they are pressing hard against the Jags. Not making it easy for him whatsoever. And here, Coach Brad McDougal coaching it up there. They don't want to give JCC any space to bring the ball across the midcourt line. Good look to find Linton. That's who you need to worry about, Michael Linton camping out down low. He'll be the recipient and the beneficiary of breaking these full court presses, that's for sure. We have Coach McDougal saying don't worry about him that far from the ball, but the ball moves quick, quicker than the player's feet still. Jaguar with the steal. McLean in the backcourt, hands it off to Dunn. Dunn's pass to Gregory. And we have a foul on Kendrell Brooks. Jesse Bro Mitchell checks in the next dead ball. Yeah, Brooks with the block using too much body. Four twenty-eight, eighteen minutes left. See the Jags move the ball around here, find some open looks, get some good shots. Got to keep it moving here. Gregory with a three. That's what happens when you move the ball around a perimeter. You find the right opportunity, and Gregory six at home. Jaguars. Up by nine, 37-28. Kept the defense moving. They were able to finally find an open shooter. That's as the they second did right three there by Brooks. Brooks. Thirty-seven, thirty-one. Coach Brad calls a timeout. Thirty-seven, twenty. Thirty-seven. Sports Network 37-31 Jaguars with the ball with the lead over the Cougars for Central Carolina in a full court press. Bodies flying, no whistles blowing as McLean 
Over to Gregory. Gregory, hot hand from three, and it's good. Third three-pointer for Jaden Gregory. Cougars gonna have to do something about that. Will they step out and guard the shooter? Because if they do, someone else is gonna pop open. Corner Elkins, three was off the mark. Elkins with one three today in the first half. Off the bench. Nice spin move and a pull up. The Jaguars lead by 11. Biggest lead for the Jaguars. Saw Jaden Dunn's hang time in the air on that. Stayed in the air for a, quite a while. As Brooks down low gets the feed from the right wing. Brooks starting fast in the second half. Eight points for Brooks. Hit six in the first half. 33-42. Picking up the dribble in the backcourt. Causes issues for the Jaguars. Gregory off the mark. It's coming down with the rebound is Johnson. Johnson picks up the dribble, top of the key. Jags back to a man-to-man -man defense. Jesse Mitchell goes up and he's stripped. Gregory, the recipient on the foul. Gregory thought he had a clean strip. Looked like he had hands on all ball. Referees disagreed and Jesse Mitchell, Jesse Mitchell will go to the line for two. Mitchell makes the first. Mitchell had 10 points and seven rebounds in the first half. He's actually up to 11 and eight now. Make a 12 and eight. Seven, uh, seven point advantage, 42-35. Still full court press by the by the uh, Cougars. Long three and McLean with a rebound. McLean needs to go straight up as he's trapped off. And unfortunately for the Jags, a turnover got stuck with the basketball, indecisive with it. And it results in turning it over and a takeaway for Central Carolina. Johnson with a long three. And that's Johnson's first points of the game for Jakari Johnson. Much needed basket at a much needed time if you're Central Carolina. 42-38. Just 10 on the shot clock now for the Jags. What can they do? They're still far away from their basket. That wasn't even a tr trying for a shot, but he got his, got the miss, deflected ball, went up strong. Done. Making it 44-38. Sometimes it just has to bounce your way, and that time it did. Right into the loving hands of Jaden Dunn, who was able to nestle, caress it, and gently place it into the basket. Jesse Mitchell inside, back out, three by Johnson. We got a whistle down low. So Gregory tagged with that foul, PD. They said he was pushing from behind. Howard checks in for Michael Linton. Small ball lineup now for JCC. A lot. Mitchell, Mitchell, mismatching. Johnson puts up a three and falls to the floor trying to draw the foul. That one didn't look good coming off of his hand, to be quite honest with you. I didn't think, I didn't think they had any chance of going in. 
Nice shovel pass to Purdy. Purdy up and under. Layup's good. Oh. What a beautiful finish by Elijah Purdy at the basket. No wonder why people like Shaw are looking at Elijah Purdy right now. Brooks called for a foul. And this, in, this defensive possession is really important for the, Jag, uh, for the uh, Cougars. They need to get a one and done here by the Jaguars if they can, and they successfully do that. Inside of Mitchell, and Jesse Mitchell to the free throw line as he's fouled. Yeah, Howard a little too physical. Be called for his first. But can the Jags get some good fortune here and, and see Mitchell miss a couple of free throws? Mitchell, Q Anderson. who averages 18 points per game as Q Anderson, along with Singletary, checks in for McLean and Gregory. Mitchell close to his season average. He's at 13 right now with a free throw pending. Forty-six forty. Full court press. Again, the Jags break it. Singletary is nearly smacked. And Brooks. Off the left side. 46 to 42. 10 points in the second half for Brooks. But they're turning defense into offense. And again, just one shot and out for the Jags. Purdy drops it off to Anderson, and Anderson camping out down <laughs> low in the right spot at the right time. Oh, what a pass by Elijah Preddy. And the goggles for the vision, the court vision that it needed for it to see its way through. Got some physicality going on. Guys running into each other with the shoulders up. This time Singleton delivering contact and called for a foul. Got plenty of time in the second half left, PD, when the Jags already at five fouls. Got to be an offensive foul there. Oh, my goodness. How was that a foul? It was a push-off by Brooks. Yeah, Brooks was pushing off. I saw a little bit of a chicken wing, but, you know, in a situation like that, maybe even the, uh, the dreaded double foul. 48, 42, 12, 40. Nice spin around, jump shot. Much needed basket for Central Carolina. Still four court pressing. Singleton for the long three and Jaden Dunn with the rebound and a putback. Singleton cleans up the mess. Second chance points again for the Jags. That's what they need, but then a three responded by Johnson. It's his third three. Correction, his second three. It's two for four. Howard. Ain't no way that score is right. Is that score right? That's the score table over there. 50 to 44. 11.52 left. Be right.
right, score was wrong on the score clock. Coach Brad for the Cougars notified us that the score was wrong on the clock, and we had it right right here. So it's 50 to 47, 11.50 left. Howard. As the Jaguars fight down low and going up strong. Was who else but Jaden Dunn? 52-47. Jaden Dunn's come alive here in the second half. Eight points, bringing him up to 14 total. Helping to pace the Jags and keep the Cougars at bay. Lassiter inside. Over to Brooks. Brooks, the hot hand for the Cougars. Brooks looking to take Purdy on the baseline and puts up the shot. But Linton with the rebound. Ahead to Purdy. Alley used to Dunn, and it Dunn misses the opportunity. Had to foul him, otherwise the roof was going to come off for the Richard B. Harrison Gymnasium with Jaden Dunn flying high in the air. Nice look by Purdy to Dunn. He's fouled, and he'll head to the line. Eleven oh eight left. Makes the first. Still plenty of time in this second half for anything to happen. But you gotta like the momentum. The Jags have had the momentum since since the beginning of the second half. They've been able to crack that full court pressure without a whole lot of resistance. But the Cougars are really in desperate need of a basket before this thing gets out of hand. Johnson with the offensive foul on Anderson, taking a charge. Good way to establish position. Draw the charge, Q Anderson, sophomore, knows exactly what to do in those situations. Got his feet outside the restricted area, firmly planted, and good execution by Quavion Anderson. 54-47. Birdie, a hand check in the backcourt by Malott. Too much. Too much uh, hand checking by him a lot. And just like uh, you can hear uh, Coach McDougal telling him, there's not much he can do to hurt you when he's 65 feet away from the basket. Might be his way of saying, back off a little bit. Wait till they get into the front court. Birdie over to Dunn. Dunn steps in a deep two from the left wing, and it's good. Smart way to Smart way to play it by Dunn to uh, avoid the defender coming flying at him, just step up, take a little higher percentage shot, just get the two points and move on. Jesse Mitchell trying to take Linton. It goes left side to Malott, Malott with a three. Dunn stops mid-range, no, and Malott with a rebound. Inside 10 minutes. Petaway straight to the hole, left side, and it's good. And Petaway getting on the board here in the second half. He's had a struggle this game. He's only up to four or five points, five points. And now a turnover for the Jags. 56-52, left. McLean checks in. Howard, Linton, Anderson, McLean, and Dunn. Jesse Mitchell trying to get some separation. Drives to the hole, switches hands. Ball does not fall. It's Howard with the rebound. Howard's been big on the boards today. Green Bay and the Cowboys are squaring off in the first round of the playoffs. The red, in the red zone, Green Bay and Dallas. 
First and 10 for Dallas is 19. Leading seven to nothing. Brooks with a turnaround mid-range and it's good. Within two, 56 to 54. Got a timeout. Coach Creasy, nine minutes to go, two point game. Don't leave us now. Jaguar Sports Network, 56 to 52. Brooks with a hot hand for the Cougars, Craig. Get him within one possession. Ken Cheryl Brooks having a fantastic second half. Again, he's uh, got 12 points here in the first 11 minutes of the final 20. He's really been one of the uh, reasons why Central Carolina's hanging around and just two points away from tying this game up. It's pet away with a steal. Back to Brooks. Brooks contested by Anderson, and Brooks to the line. You don't mind that foul by Q Anderson, though. Gonna make, gonna make Brooks earn it at the free throw line. I mean, he's, again, he's had the hot hand, but he is one of two from the charity stripe. Two of the biggest free throws all day long for either team. Within one, made free throw. Can we have our fifth tie today? And if it does get tied up, if you're Coach McDougal, will you continue to full court press? We're knotted at 56. I'll tell you what, the full court press really has not been the reason why they fought their way back into this game because the Jaguars have been able to break it. But it's been tenacious defense like that where they're harassing the ball handler. That's what's helped them get back into this game. This JCC operates pretty well in space, PD, when there's when they have space in the uh, in the area to throw the passes. They've been able to find guys underneath the basket or also wide open in the corner for open looks. A lot of people here watching the Jaguars today as there's no school tomorrow. I want to wish everybody a happy Martin Luther King holiday. A lot of people on hand here in Selma watching the Jaguars and the Cougars battle off on this Sunday in January. We all have a dream, Craig. Brooks continues a hot streak with a three. And right now, dreams turning the nightmares for the Jaguars as their lead has been completely erased, and now they find themselves on the negative side of the scoreboard. Jaguars open up the second half on a 9-0 run. It's been all Cougar since. I'll tell you what, that cross-court pass by Elijah Preddy was a thing of beauty. I don't know how he was able to find Q Anderson, but he did, and then Anderson with a with an exceptional finish at the basket. 21-12 run for the Cougars. 7.30 left. KJ again. 61 to 58. We're setting ourselves up for an interesting finish, PD, as this is a very, very close game. Neither team can afford to make a critical mistake. Catch him from the corner, put it up, and here comes Jesse Mitchell. Mitchell. And we have a blocking foul by Howard. 
Couldn't get the position established this time. And guilty of the blocking foul. So can Mitchell increase the lead for the visitors from Sanford? Remember, they lost a one-point game on their floor to the Jaguars back on November 29th. See players rotating in and out for JCC. 62-58, Cougars lead by four. Not only the Cougars in the bonus, but they also have the possession arrow in their favor as well. 63-58. Then another turnover by the Jags. That's turnover number 10. They're happening at the worst time. Got a timeout. Media timeout. 6.56 left. Cougars lead 63-58. to 58. CCC with the ball, the Cougars, 63-58, 6.47 left, five-point lead, biggest lead for the Cougars. Can they build on that lead here? Six and a half to go in this game. They're in a good pos position to do so right now. Mitchell straight to the hole, and the Cougars hit by seven. Jaguars don't need to catch yourself just throwing up shots for the perimeter. What got you here can carry you home as long as you stick with it. That free uh, that was a good attempt right there on that side by McLean. Just couldn't get it to fall. But as we can see, the Cougars are currently outworking the Jaguars. 67-58. And Purdy, 10-7. That's the two they needed. Got to get a stop here because instead, over and back, that's exactly what you need. I thought they were going to call a foul on Freddie for being too physical, for reaching in, but nope. Foul call, I mean, excuse me, uh, over and back. He did go over and back, but I thought the foul came before that, and that's possibly what McDougal is arguing. 67, 65, 43 left. It's pet away on Purdy. Huge possession for JCC. Necessarily don't need a three, just need a bucket. Purdy. Ah, oh, in and out. And he can't believe it either. The soft touch Purdy has does not fall. Like 
like a double dribble from our view, vantage point. Pet away to the floor, and he'll shoot two. Tried to gather himself to go up and put it up, but instead he was hit by uh, he was hit by Johnson. Eight point advantage, pet away. Pet away, sinking both free throws, making a nine point game. Seven in the second half for pet away. Quarter three, and not following your shot is Jaden Gregory. All alone with the layup was Leach. That looked like a travel to me, but he was able to convert. Let this point one. Lead. Yeah, Freddie couldn't get it to fall. Now you're getting into the danger zone. Eleven points down, four and a half to go. Not where you want to be on your home floor. Cougars, you know, they're feeling pretty good about where they stand right now. Can they finish the job? A nice take. We got a timeout. Coach B, 73 to 60. Searching for a bucket. Cougars doing a much better job closing out on perimeter shooters. Linton trapped off of that baseline. Eight on the shot clock. And it's a strip turnover, Jaguars. Nice take by Emmanuel McLean, but coming out with the ball. Stripped on the baseline. Too many fruitless possessions for the Jaguars and it's last five or six minutes. That's what's caused them to fall down by 13 after being up by seven or eight. And this thing right now feels like it's getting away from them as the sounds in the hourglass start to drip out. As Leach extends the lead by 13, uh, 16. Jaguars. 76 to 60. You can see the frustration on the faces of the players. They just need something to break through for them. I mean, still some time to, to make a run here, but it's got to happen right now. There's what you need to do as a miss. Hey, hey, hey. 
Jaguar now scored 47 to 30 here in the second half. They trail 76 to 60. Just gone extremely, extremely cold at the worst time. But the Cougars did not. They stayed consistent. Correction, they outscored 52 to 30. Linton makes the first. And we got substitutions coming in for the Cougars. As they will rotate in a couple of fresh players. Johnson Kate comes in and Nathan Willis will check in as Lassiter and Leach set down with two. 54 left. Good. Willis with the. Fifteen points down. What can you do if you're the Jags? Starts every turnover. possession. And that's two. that's a good recipe right there, which is a force a turnover. Then uh, cause a foul, and now you've got Jaden Dunn at the line for one and one. Dunn makes the first. Sixty-two, seventy-six. Mitchell's going to take a seat. He's had up to 17 points. Don misses his pet away with a rebound. 14 point deficit. Pet away, follow through off the miss, reverse layup, 78 62. Singleton puts up a shot, falls to the floor, heads to the free throw line. Jaguars. Trying to climb up the ladder out of the hole. Yeah. Jaguars been outscored 21 to four to seven in the last seven and a half minutes. Yeah, they allowed themselves to fall behind much too far, and, and I'm afraid, Petey, this one may be maybe too far gone for them to come back, especially when you're missing free throws. Central Carolina will improve to six and eight in conference play. Jaguars fall to three and seven in conference play. Overall record for the Cougars is eight and ten. Two games shy of 500. Jaguars will fall to four and eight. We got 223 left. And the timeout with them. Three Jaguars. 223 left. Jaguars next game is home on Thursday against Fayetteville Tech. They'll look to bounce back. If the Cougars hold on to this 15-point lead. 
with 2.10 left. Turnover forced by the Jags. That's what they need. But you also got to have some, some fortune here. You got to see some offense. Down 15, got to see some three balls falling. But again, PD feels like it's too little too late. Now we're creeping underneath two minutes. Howard, nice step aside of Willis, but could not connect. And that's just how the Jaguars' second half has been tonight. Petaway with 148 left. Stands at the top of the key, goes right side to Willis, back inside to Brooks. Back out as Coach Creasy is telling his players to foul. Seventy-eight, sixty-three. Got to believe this game's going to leave a bad taste in the mouth of Coach Jay Creasy and, and the Jaguars. An opponent they're familiar with, an opponent they've already defeated. You know, and really the, the difference in this game, PD, was that stretch here we saw here in the second half where the Jags just went completely cold. And luckily, just narrowly avoided an injury there. As Petaway was going up for the rebound. Right, they're going to call him for the foul. It's Petaway with a foul as Howard to the line. It's a one and one coming up here for Shakir Howard. Howard misses the opportunity, but Dunn fighting. Jaguars coming up empty on this multiple trips here in the second half. Jaguars with the steal, still fighting. Opportunity after opportunity, and the Jaguars able to get one through the net. Got Coach Creasy calls a timeout, trailing by 14, 78-64. JCC Jaguar Sports Network, 78-65, 120 left. Jaguars on a full court press. Got a steal by Dunn. Dunn taking it up, drawing the foul. And foul's gonna be on Brooks. And Willis got his pocket picked going up the court. Free throw right there, converted by Jaden Dunpeedy. I mean, again, it feels like it's academic just because of the the lack of efficiency by the Jaguars. By the Jaguars, but I mean, you know, one thirteen to go. Make this free throw. He doesn't, but say so get that. You never know what could happen. But there's foul call, and they're gonna tag Howard with that one. So. 
Here we go down to this side to shoot free throws, and this time it'll be Kentrell Brooks, key of the hot hand in the second half. 12-point game, 70 seconds, Craig. It's, I, hear the, I hear the lady humming in the background, but I quite, you know, with Brooks continuing his hot hand from the charity strike, slowly climbs out because you can't trade. It's just like in football. You can't trade touchdowns for field goals. You can't, you can't do it in basketball, making a free throw, missing a free throw when they're making both of them. And can control Brooks now with 22 points in the second half, Petey. I mean, he's been the difference maker, and he's been the guy who's led the uh, Cougars to this uh, potential victory with a minute and 10 to go. Yeah, Craig, 65, 80 to 65 is definitely uh, taking a look. You know, you're five possessions away. You know, that's not, you got 70 seconds, five possessions. Pretty much this game's academic right now. It's a lot to ask if you're Coach Creasy and his team. I mean, I really feel like fatigue was playing a factor. They were working so hard over the first 30 minutes of the game. And then there was a stretch in that final 10 minutes where all of a sudden they just couldn't get a ball to fall in the hoop for them. They were turning the basketball over. They were getting out rebounded. And that's really led to the downfall of the Jaguars in this game. You know, again, they were up by, you know, if I'm not mistaken, they were up by seven. Uh, around, I want to say, 53-46, if I'm not mistaken. All of a sudden, it's all over. It's It's been all Central Carolina since then. You know, Jaguars are up, thir put, put on a 6-0 run in the first half, went up 30-24. to 24. But, you know, and then they come out in the second half, jumped up by eight. Then the Cougars fought back, got within seven. You know, and it's been it's back and forth basketball, and the Jaguars continue to climb. But like you said, 12 minutes to go in the game, the, you know, act like the Jaguars couldn't buy a bucket they as still, they continue to struggle. They still can buy a bucket, unfortunately, as Howard had a three go off the side of the rim. Linton got a rebound and got it stolen away from him. And now another foul called. This time it's going to be against Alvin Singleton. So under a minute to go, and again, looks like the writing is on the wall for JCC in this game. Have to look their wounds, come back Thursday, and hope for a better result. I have a post-game interview with Coach Creasy at the conclusion of the game. As Willis. Makes a second free throw. It's 82-65. 82-66, correction. McDougal still not letting up on that full court press. Singleton still continues his struggles. And one last foul for good measure. Singleton this time will commit it. Both teams in a double bonus. First half it was done and Purdy. In the second half it's all been done. Purdy with seven points. And Nathan Willis averages nine points per game. Singleton fouls out as Anderson checks in. As the Cougars will move on to eight and ten overall, six and eight in conference play. Eerily silent in this gym. No one's left their seat, but there's the Jaguars still fighting back. That should do it right there. Cougars don't even have to uh, take, attempt a shot. Shot clock is off. Final tonight from Selma. 83-68. 54 points second half. I'm going to come right back here with an interview with Coach Creasy. 
right after a word from our sponsors. Welcome back as JCC Jaguars fall at home, 83 to 68. I got Craig standing by with Coach Creasy as a Jaguars. Look, tonight come up short in the first half. They were good, but in the second half, they fell short to the, the Central Carolina Cougars. We'll be right back with a quick interview with Coach Creasy. All right, Coach Creasy in green. Craig is standing by. All right, got uh, Coach Jay Creasy with me post game. Coach, one point game at the half. 
second half. There was a kind of a lull in the middle of the second half. Uh, looks like uh, Brooks got going there. Kind of tell me what happened there, that uh, that little stretch in the second half. We just got got outplayed. Uh, really not much of a, of a reason other than got outplayed, got outworked, got out hustled. Everything you can say got outed, we got outed. Uh, credit to Central Carolina, uh, Coach Brad, they just they, they outplayed us. Uh, pretty much every facet of the game, especially uh, second half on, uh, just wasn't ready to, wasn't locked in to play. Uh, you know, come up with any kind of excuse you want, but we didn't play well, and we didn't deserve to win the game, and the outcome is the outcome. You got Thursday night coming up here, right back here at home, Fayetteville Tech, second of a four-game stretch here in your building. So, uh, Tell us about the uh, secret recipe is going to be to get ready for that game. Flush this one out the uh, out of your memory and then get ready for Fayetteville Tech. Well, you go. You, you, you should be able to, you, you know, in this region, you got to, at, 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 at best, at worst, take care of home. Uh, we haven't done that. Um, we actually played better on the road than at home. Um, so just got to figure out what, what, what we have to do as a group to play 40 consistent minutes of basketball. Um, you know, we, we play in stretches, but then we have four or five minute stretches where we just can't find the basket, mental lapses on defense, complete breakdowns, I'll give up offensive rebounds, just mistakes that we're not good enough to overcome. So we have to work harder to get better and eliminate the mistakes. Hey, Coach Crucci, appreciate your time here. So gracious after the game. Thank you so much. See you on Thursday. All right, PD, Jags fall on a tough game today. They led at the half. But uh, he got away from the second half. Got to give credit to uh, Central Carolina. Coach Dontrell, uh, Dontrell Brooks had a uh, nice second half. But we'll see what they do on Thursday night when they come back against Fayetteville Tech. Right back to you, Petey. All right, thanks a lot, Craig. As the Jaguars fall 83-68, we're going to come right back here with final box scores right after a word from our sponsors. <laughs> against Central Carolina Cougars. Next up for the Jaguars, they're home on Thursday night against Fayetteville Tech. We'll have the doubleheader tipping off at 6 o'clock pregame with Petey Doris, Craig Green at 5.30. Until then, I want to thank everybody on Jaguars Sports Network for bringing this game to you tonight. For Petey Doris, Craig Green, God bless and good night from JCC J.